Golden Black Live, Friday afternoon. Brian Newber joins us uh, as well, and we are uh, here for the, uh, I think it's the 17th of January, and um, <coughs> glad, to, glad to have you on board this afternoon. We will have uh, Brian and Brian this segment, and uh, Dan Ross, who has uh, been a longtime swim coach, but really uh, obviously he's done a, done a lot of things in, in the swim program over the years, but kind of an icon of Purdue athletics. He's been back uh, almost, uh, he's actually older than I am, but a guy that's been around a long time, great guy, and we'll look forward to catching up with him about a variety of topics. And then, of course, Tom Deanhart will join us on the back end, some news on, on uh, Purdue football and some coaching uh, uh, assistant coach moves, et cetera. So we'll hit that as well. I want to thank our sponsors, and that's Triple X on the Hill, but on the level of Purdue tradition since 1929. State Farm agent Trent Johnson, the Trent is my agent .com, and Hilton Garden Inn. When well, tomorrow's a big day, state HDI tonight. And Brian, uh, you'll be. I don't know, happily is the word, but you're going to be heading down the heading down the road to Indianapolis to head to to uh, uh, BWI Airport to report on Purdue and Maryland tomorrow, and uh, uh, it's going to be a big challenge for the Boilermakers in, in in any situation in College Park. Yeah, that's a really hard place to win. You know, the fact Purdue has done that a couple times here yeah. the last few years doesn't change the fact that that's you know as far as home court advantages go. Um, in the Big Ten, obviously Purdue is right up there at the top. Indiana's right up there at the top. Maryland is, that's a pretty hard place to play. Those people are mean. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one place last year that noticeably affected Purdue on the road. You know, Purdue won the Big Ten last year because it could win in hostile environments, yeah. Wisconsin, Ohio State, Indiana. Maryland was the one place that got between its ears. Yeah. Uh, the guy in the front row in the blue shirt, uh, yeah. <laughs> notably. Um, Tough place to play, really tough place to play. Purdue has really scored, really struggled to score on the road. Uh, they trended well against Michigan. Obviously, Michigan is not a very good defensive team. Um, Maryland is. Uh, Maryland has been a very good defensive team. Maryland is really struggling to score, too. Yeah. So if the results of this season for both teams, the metrics, whatever you want to look at, have any bearing on what's going to happen tomorrow? This could be hideous. This could be <laughs> this could be the rock fight of all rock fights. Two yeah. teams that are at the bottom of the Big Ten in shooting percentages. Yeah. Two teams that are at the bottom of the Big Ten in scoring in terms of points per game. Um, but both teams with some talent. Both teams with some ability to do better than they've done offensively. But two very good defensive teams. What makes that facility? Because I have not been in that facility. But what makes it so? I mean, is it a proximity issue? I mean, I know the students are kind of on the. On the, at least as I recall, kind of in the uh, behind the baskets, but is it what makes that a tough environment in your view? Uh, Just their Andy North. I mean, who? who what's, that's Wisconsin. Oh, that's right. So that's Scott Van Pelt is. That's the, right. Uh, I get those. I get, the, get those uh, prominent guys. alum at Maryland. Yeah. they're mean. Um, that's basically what it is. It's kind of. Uh, Old school ACC East Coast viciousness. I mean, they're just they're just mean. Um, yeah. You know, there's kind of this vertical wall of students that comes down the far side of the arena that really made the free throws Carson Edwards made yeah. to win that game a few yeah. years ago remarkable. Because what you're looking up into oh, is yeah, just it's, it's this tough. this tower of raucous, and uh, it is just a, a very tough place to play. I think Maryland was one of the pioneers of the cheesecake chant at Caleb yeah. Swanigan that worked yeah. wonders for opponents. Yeah. They just they go below the belt happily there, yeah. Uh, yeah. shall we say. And uh, I would expect, I don't know what kind of cannon fodder Purdue, yeah. this Purdue team gives people like that, but yeah. uh, if there's any vulnerability there, they will yell it, they will scream it, and they will uh, do their best to help Maryland win that game. Yeah, You know, you look at, at where Purdue is, and obviously the, uh, it seems like a long time ago since they disposed of, and that's, uh, to, put it, to put it mildly, Michigan State 29-point win. Um, <clears throat> You know, the, the, the term of the week is: Are they are have they turned the corner? Has Purdue turned the corner? What will what will def, what will uh, make you feel that way, or do you just think this is the way that this season's going to be? It's going to be grind in, grind out type of type of uh, basketball. Well, they have to show they can win a close game on the road. Yeah, uh, they have to show they can win any game on the road. Yeah. Um, if Purdue beats Northwestern, which everyone should beat Northwestern yeah. this year, in my opinion. Um, that doesn't mean Purdue turned a corner on the road. Purdue has to go to an Ohio State, has to go to a Wisconsin, has to go to a Maryland yeah. and win a competitive game. You know, they were that close against Michigan. A lot of different things go differently. If Purdue has Matt Harms, maybe it wins that game. If Purdue, you know, just, 
you know, you had a chance to win it at the buzzer in regulation. Obviously, that was a play that was a little bit broken. It wasn't something that you know necessarily you expect uh, them to convert. But you had every opportunity to win that game. That needs to be made into a tangible sign of progress, yeah. a, a reflection of the fact Purdue is ready to win these games, something that will parlay itself into Purdue actually winning these yeah. games. Yeah. Because if Purdue wants to go to the NCAA tournament, if Purdue wants to be there in the final few weeks – in the Big Ten race, that does seem a long way off at this point still. Um, it's going to have to win a bunch of games away from Mackey Arena, a few games at least away from Mackey Arena. And um, the results, pr left, the results yeah. prior to Michigan, obviously, were not terribly encouraging. Um, so Purdue just has to show it's ready to win one of those. That, that's how last season turned, remember. Yeah. They won at Wisconsin. They won at Ohio State, two very close games. That changed the whole season. Yeah. That was the turning point for Purdue. Purdue needs that game um, this season, in my opinion, and tomorrow is a great opportunity. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, and I think if that's in a situation too, where you look at look at that uh, game and you say uh, Maryland has struggled offensively, but they've been really good, and they did enter the season as a top ten, top you know perceived as a top ten. I think I think they were made. Well, they got in the top five, five at, at one point, time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is not a a. a, a uh, this is a good basketball team. Right. I mean, uh, and and that's what I, I think it's been interesting is do you start looking at schools, you know, teams like Ohio State or even Michigan that's gone through some tar hard times. Uh, do you all of a sudden wipe away the fact that you you felt these teams were really good early on and 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 things have changed? I mean, how do how does that evolve from your perspective? Well, the thing about Maryland is they're very often going to be that team that has the players to be a Big Ten champion more often than not. Who's you don't necessarily ever trust to do it. Uh, yeah. They've had really talented teams, top three talent, probably in the Big Ten a lot, and really not done a whole lot to show for it. But they are always capable because they're always going to have players. They're always going to have players, and that's always going to be a tough place to play. Um, but they're a little bit emblematic of the Big Ten this year yeah. in the sense that so is Purdue. Uh, yeah. they've, they're unbeaten in Big Ten play at home. They're winless on the road. Uh, now, Illinois should have beaten them in College Park. Uh, yeah way back when in December. Yeah, right. But that's kind of the league this year is I think what there have been six road wins out of 42 games yeah. so far in Big Ten play. Uh, Maryland and Purdue are winless away from their home venues. So are Ohio State. So is Michigan. So is Minnesota, I believe. Um, road wins are gold. They always are in the Big Ten. Every yeah. single year, road wins are gold. But this year, you know, um, Michigan State and somebody else, I think Wisconsin went seven and three in the league on yeah. the road last year. Is anybody doing that this yeah. year? Is is you know Purdue went six and four. Somebody else went six and four too. I uh, can't remember who it was. Is anybody going six and four this year? Yeah. This is a Maybe year Michigan where State if you somehow should, yeah. get the five hundred on the road, you yeah. you're you're. You were the right unicorn there. in the league, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Michigan State obviously went the opposite direction uh, based on what we saw this past Sunday, but they uh, they did win at Northwestern. Uh, that was a close game, though. Very close and game. There's no reason Michigan State versus Northwestern should be a close game. Right, and so that's that's how goofy this yeah. all this is, and and, and you may have uh, a log jam to, to end all log jams here before this is all done with a bunch of teams at 12 and 8, 13 and 7. Uh, that type of uh, that type of deal. All right, so some specifics. Obviously, we talk about offense and being able to shoot the basketball on the road. I thought you had a good, very good story this morning on the site. If you didn't have a chance to see it, it's, a, it's kind of breaking down the differences, which are at some at some places are pretty stark in terms of what people, uh, how, how teams score in the Big Ten at home versus uh, on the road, and Purdue being one of them. It's 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 pretty remarkable the, some of the numbers that you put together. Yeah, um, that took me hours, yeah. so I'm glad somebody found it interesting. Yeah. Uh, three teams in the Big Ten are shooting 30% or better from three-point range um, on the road, and two of them are Nebraska and Northwestern. Yeah. The other one's Rutgers. I mean, that, that's, that's normal uh, in the Big Ten, you know, to not shoot as well as typically you would at home, but it just seems like scoring on the road in the Big Ten. And I don't know if the numbers necessarily bear that out, but you just see the anecdotal stuff, the Purdue scoring 37 at Illinois, the Maryland scoring 49 at Iowa, the Michigan State scoring 42 at Purdue. You yeah. know, you just see these anemic offensive performances on the road. And for Purdue, you know, people will say, oh, they just have to shoot better to win on the road. That, that yeah, sure. But 
Purdue has to do what Purdue is doing well, even better on the road, more than it has to make shots. If you make shots, great, but I don't think you can count on it. I think, you know, Purdue's defense, Purdue's rebounding have to be its, it, its foundations on the road. Uh, it has to be its foundations everywhere, but I think that's how Purdue has to win uh, on the road. I think that, you know, that's something Purdue has and needs to embrace, that this is a team that can play in low-scoring games and thrive, and yeah. that's just – that seems to be the reality on the road. So instead of saying this team needs an entirely different outcome than what can reasonably ex be expected around the league, I think you probably need to look at it like Purdue needs to win 55 to 52. Purdue yeah. needs to win with defense and rebounding. That Those have been the things Purdue's been good at all season long, and that's not going to change anytime soon. I thought one thing that Matt Painter said in your interview with him yesterday uh, post um, or for the – for the Maryland preview, though, about the importance of shooting the ball well to help the defense. I mean, uh, that may make sense because it allows you to set yourself, well, set this up, up a little bit, but talk about that. Yeah, that's been his, I mean, that, and that everything Matt Painter says about basketball tends to make perfect sense yeah. when he says it. I don't know if fans necessarily look at basketball for some of the obviousness that's right there, yeah. um, but he has a way of putting it into words that, yeah just makes total sense all the time. And that's obviously always been one of his things has been that, you know, the best, basically, in my words, the best transition defense is not having to play it. Yeah. And when you turn the ball over, you take bad shots, your defense is compromised. When your defense is established in the half court, when you have five guys with two feet on the floor, so to speak, all looking at the guys that they're about to be guarding, you are going to be a much better defensive team than not. When you're scrambling, when you're running, when the offense has an advantage, you're not going to be as good. And that, that's, just, that, that's just common sense. And Purdue, when they don't turn the ball over, they defend pretty well. Yeah. And when you look at what they did in the first half against Michigan State, not turning the ball over, when you look at the difference between the second half and the first half at Michigan, yeah. that was the big difference in that game. If Purdue doesn't turn it over double-digit times for double-digit Michigan points in the first half, who knows how that game yeah. turns out. Right. That is the single biggest factor tomorrow, too, at Maryland. Purdue cannot turn the ball over. Purdue cannot get in scramble modes. Purdue cannot get behind plays, cannot, get, cannot put Maryland at the foul line. If they do those things, it's going to be a long, a long day. Maryland really struggles to score if Purdue's defense is established and, and set and ready to play as well as it can play, as, as well as it's shown it can play. Defense and rebounding can carry this team yeah, probably and, a long way. And the Boilermakers have had – what they won there two years ago in the last uh, last minute lost last year was it Ar Edwards had made the free throws was that as the freshman year or that soft? was his freshman year. okay so three years ago that uh, uh, Purdue Purdue wins there so it's a, it isn't always a diff difficult place to play and and uh, Purdue will have to bring its A game the talk of the Travian Williams has been uh, obviously. Didn't, you're never going to follow up a 36 and 20 performance, but he uh, with with uh, replicating that or duplicating that, I should say. But uh, another solid performance against uh, Michigan State. How do you see that breaking down with Matt Harms and and how the minutes will uh, be dispersed? And do you expect to see them a lot together? You've talked about that a little bit, but do you, how do you, do you think that Purdue will play that out? It might be tough in this game um, because Maryland, matchups are everything. Yeah, I think Maryland will play a little bit smaller. Um, but I think, you know, that's still kind of a work in progress, how those guys coexist playing side by side. You know, I think that I don't know if it's your best defensive lineup against a lot of opponents. Um, you know, obviously matchups will matter, and that's how Painter has been handling it. I think it's kind of a work in progress, largely because Harms has missed so much time. Yeah. You haven't had enough time to keep it in kind of the, kind of the incubator here to see how it's working out, to really get those guys established together, to see how that chemistry works out. Offensive spacing, I think, is always going to be an issue um, when you have two big guys playing side by side like this. You want to make sure both of those guys are in position to succeed, too. And if you're putting Travion Williams at the rim, then you're putting Matt Harms on the perimeter. And while he's very skilled as a perimeter, you also don't want to waste his ability as an entry guy. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily in a place as a jump shooter yet where He's going to command respect, but what can he do once that respect is paid to him? Can he put the ball on the floor? Can he attack? That's not really his strength. Um, you know, Trayvon Williams, you don't really want to put him away from the basket because he's going to be in compromising positions defensively there. But also, when you've got the Big Ten's arguably the best rebounder in the league, one of them certainly, you don't want him floating around the perimeter either. Uh, you want to make sure both of those guys 
are playing to their strengths. And Purdue, it's been a work in progress for Purdue figuring out exactly how to do that. And with Matt Harms going out with a couple injuries here lately, that's probably set that process back a little bit. Any sense to how much he's progressed this last week? I mean, he was being uh, gimpy. I mean, is there any yeah, feeling on that? We can only go by what they what he tells us, and he's always going to be super positive about things. I think it's probably a situation where it's going to limit him a little bit. He's going to have to play through some discomfort. Um, you just hope for his sake he's had a little bit of a tough luck season here with two concussions and now this. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. No. I'm not forgetting an injury. Am I? No, no, um, the concussion. The, the he's had a little bit of a, a tough luck season here. You just want he's going to have to play through some things most likely with this hip. You just want to see him not pick up anything else here. You know, his body type is the type where contact is, you know, a little more forceful probably on him than it would be a lot of other guys. He doesn't absorb it uh, quite the same way. Uh, you just really want to see him be able to stay healthy because yeah. Purdue needs him. The fact Travion Williams is playing really well doesn't distract from the fact that Purdue needs Matt Harms. Yeah. They needed him defensively at Michigan. Now, obviously, if you have him at Michigan, you don't know if Travion Williams has the same game he had. So that's really a hard comparison to make. But you really need him at both ends of the floor because he's a really, really good player. And you just, you just hate to see him missing time uh, with injuries. Yeah, no doubt. That's going to be an interesting storyline to watch. Okay, well, we'll look for Brian's work. His preview of the game is on the site now. Again, read also his, his story from this morning about uh, uh, the role of uh, defense in the league and, 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 and the challenges of offense, certainly. Uh, an excellent story as well. So, Brian, we'll, we'll look forward to that tomorrow and uh, produce game 2 o'clock, I believe, on ESPN. Maybe 2. ESPN 2 and uh, Purdue... Uh, Maryland, and then of course Purdue will return home on Tuesday night, seven o'clock against Illinois, uh, which will also be a very interesting basketball game. So we'll take a two-minute break, bring in Dan Ross, and uh, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk some swimming, certainly. We'll also talk about uh, uh, his his long long uh, career in Purdue athletics. He's seen a lot of things. A lot of coaches around Purdue sports have uh, befriended uh, Dan over the years, and. Uh, he's been a good confidant to them as well. So we'll, uh, there's some good stories in there too. So we'll look forward to doing that in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned on Golden Black Live. Dive into the new Badaya. 